Excuse me? Yeah, what can I do for you? Um, it's kind of been doing that a lot lately. I was wondering if uh, maybe you could have a look at it. Well, it'll be a few hours wait. You and your boys can just hang out front. We've got two customers to deal with first. Oh, uh, isn't there anything you can do? We kind of have to get right back on the road really quick. Eh, slow down there, Shawnee. You can, uh, wait a little bit. You guys on a road trip or something? We're on tour. On tour, like uh, you guys play like uh, rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Hot dang, dude! I'm uh, here talking with a bunch of genuine MTV celebrities. You guys uh, sell your golden record yet? I mean, uh, hey, what's the name of your band anyway? We're the Little Devils. Little Devils, eh? I'll tell you what. You guys go squat on your thumbs for a while. When I get done with these cars, I can take care of you. All right, thanks. What do you say? It's gonna be a few hours. Man, I'm starving. You think they got anything to eat in there? They might, but I don't think you want anything they got in there. It looks a little bit grungy. Yeah, I feel it for those poor souls in the food industry. I mean, I don't wash my hands when I make anything for me to eat. What the hell would I care if I was making it for somebody else? Believe me, it's worse than that. I worked at a deli once. It all started on a really hot day during the summer of 97. I was completely out of cash. I mean, I didn't have a dime. I had worked at this video store for about six months before they laid me off and all that money was gone. I had a one bedroom apartment that felt more like an oven than a home. Mailbox, Yeah, Mr. Alexander, this is James, your landlord. Yeah, I've been waiting for you right for the past two weeks. Give me a call back.
aside for a second. I gotta talk to you. Come here. <laughs> hey, Jeff. You ever meet my brothers Dean and Dale from the block? Um, hey, uh, how are you guys doing? Ugh. So what brings you up, man? What are you doing around here? Uh, um, the, the collection agency, uh, came today, so, uh, I, I'm just trying to go downtown and, and find a job. Oh, what a shame. You know what happened about two years ago? I think it was before you moved into town. A factory on 4th Street shut down, and it took about 500 community jobs. It was a tragedy, pure tragedy. Just like this time, I was walking in the park. I was walking with my girlfriend, Sheena, and we were walking, and uh, I looked up, and I see these flocks of birds. And you know, the rest of the flock just took off like a regular bird flock would. But one bird just kept following me. So I'm like, I'm getting a little nervous after about five minutes, and I'm like, Sheena, we gotta run. You know, I, I ain't no idiot. I know if I outrun Sheena, I'll save my life. So what I did is I kicked Sheena to the ground. I kicked her about three times to make sure she wouldn't get up. And I just kept running. I kept running, but the bird didn't fall from my little trap. The bird, the bird kept following me. I was like, damn bird, stop following me. It was crazy. All right, well, I gotta go. I gotta go, all right? I'll, I'll catch you guys later. Hi, uh, how ya? What do you want? Hey, relax, little guy. Is your old man around? Who are you? My name's Jeff. I'm looking for a job. We don't have any jobs. Well, maybe if I could talk to your dad. Dad! What the hell do you want? Can't you take care of the place yourself? What do you want? Um, I was just wondering if you had any jobs. Yeah, you know how to cut meat? I worked at Arby's for a week. I hate Arby's. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, come back tomorrow. Let me talk with you. Let me see what we can do. Cool. I'll see you then. Hey, boy. How'd the hunt go? Not bad. Old man Bagzarian down at the deli is having me come back tomorrow. No. Don't get involved with that guy. He's no good. He's no good. What? What do you mean? Don't you know where he gets his meat from? Um, I'm guessing... Uh, cows and pigs. You remember that old lady that lived above the deli not too long ago? Well, she just recently died, and the police were looking for a family for a burial. They didn't find a family. So word has it that old man Bagzarian had to deal with the police department that any unclaimed stiffs go to him for a reasonable fee. That's sick. I'm having a hard time believing anyone, especially the police, sell dead bodies to a butcher. You ever have a steak from that place? Uh, no. They're juicy and tender, and the prices couldn't be beat, my friend. And you don't get that from any run the milk cow, no sir. Them's people they serving up. People! Whatever, whatever. I've I've had enough of this. I'll see you guys later. I'll see you at dinner tomorrow, huh? Very funny. What do you want? Remember me? Your dad told me I should come back today to talk about a job. No. No? 
No what? No, you can't get a job here. Why? I don't like you. Why don't you like me? You're too skinny. Well, can I just talk to your dad then? Dad! Do what you want. Can you take care of the store yourself? Oh, you still looking for a job? Yeah. Here, put the sign, come with me. First of all, you never go in the freezer. Never. I always lock it when I'm not here. Okay. Second of all, you never talk to the customers. Yeah, that's fine. Third, don't cut yourself. Lord knows where you've been. I don't want you bleeding all over my meat. Sure. If you cut yourself, I fire you. If you come in late, I fire you. You leave early, I fire you. No problem. You come in at 7, you leave at 4. Before I teach you the basics, though, I want to ask you some questions. You live with anybody? No. You divorced? No. Any relatives? Not in this town. Good. Let's get started. So where has Sanji been? I haven't seen him lately. Can I tell you to take a lunch break?
Hey, mister, I lost my dog. Have you seen him? No, I haven't seen any dogs around here lately. I haven't seen him all day. I hope he's okay. Well, I hope you find him. Let me know if you do, okay? Okay, thanks, mister. Well, 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 look at the working man. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Just thought we'd come by, scope out the place. How's things around here? Some strange stuff, man. This dog ran in the store earlier today, bags there and took it into the back room, and it sounded like he was cutting it up. I haven't seen it since. That little girl that just walked out the door? That was, that was her dog. She's looking for it. That don't surprise me one bit, man. That guy's a freaking freak. I'll tell you what. If he's gonna kill humans, what's a dog? It's a canine. That little girl's dog is being sautéed in goulash as we speak. And that's not all, dude. Check this out. This old lady came in here earlier today, and Bagsarian seemed like he took a huge interest in her. He took her into the back room, and sounded like he choked her to death, and then chopped her. Oh my god. This is disgusting. This guy needs to be stopped. It's time to take action, boys. Don't think you're not next, dude. The old man looks to you like a fattened hog getting ready for the kill. I don't, I don't think so. I think we should call the cops. No! Don't call the cops. Where do you think that old man gets his meat? You ever listen to me, man? Look, just give me one more day, all right? If things keep looking suspicious, we'll make some plans. But for now, give it a rest. All right, this is what we'll do. We're going to come back tomorrow at the same time. And if it looks sketchy, we're going to take some action. I'm only doing this because I like you, man, for real. You guys are only doing this because you want a good excuse to beat somebody up and get your picture in the paper. Don't think that way, man. This guy deserves it. All right, we're going to take off. Be careful, man. Be careful. Hey, Miss, are you sure you haven't seen my dog? Sorry, kiddo. I haven't seen him. Hey, little girl. You still looking for your dog? I think I know where he is. Come on back here. We'll go take a look together. See, little girl, I told you we'd find him. Thanks, mister. Jeff, I'm going to pick somebody up. Quit screwing around, I'll be right back. I just saw that, man. Saw so what? I saw that little girl come in, but she didn't come out. That little girl? She was the one looking for a dog. Bagazarian just lured her into the back room. Ugh. Sickest thing I ever heard. Boys? Wait, wait, hold on now. Let's call the cops. They'll handle this. Forget it, man. The pigs are probably already on to us. If we don't take affirmative action right now, we're gonna be dead as doornails. Don't do it, dude. I don't care what you're saying. I'm calling him right now. You're, you're killing us all, man! Uh, yeah, I'd like to report a multiple homicide. Oh, here he comes. That's the old lady. What old lady? The old lady walking down the street. That's the one that Bagsarian killed earlier. That old lady? That don't look like a dead old lady. No, you idiot, he didn't kill her. That's the girl in the dark, right there. Hey, there's the old man. So we're getting ready to pounce, boys. No, he didn't kill anybody, you idiots! But you guys gotta get out of here. If he catches you here, I'm fired! Back at her, boys. We'll get him another day. No, he didn't do anything. Just leave him alone. Just sneak out the back. Sneak out the back. not to screw around. What's going on here, Jeff? Nothing. I know what's going on here. No, nothing. Nothing is going on. Why are you on the phone? You can't put one over on the old Christian brothers. Yeah!
Everybody hold it, right there! It ends up the cops weren't in on any kind of cannibalism scheme at all. But Pete and his brother was right about Bagdasarian. I don't think they'll ever stop telling that story. Yeah, I've seen dead bodies. I've seen the things that make women and children weep at night. Some people complain about the hours they have to work, the type of work they have to do, how far they have to drive to get there. I mean, I went to hell and back for this job. I never even got a paycheck. I got fired once from that guitar shop because I wasn't making any sales. Of course, I was getting there two hours late every day. And that was around the same time Katie and I started living together, and uh, we were having a lot of relationship problems. So, how was your day? It sucked. Aren't you gonna ask me how my day was? No, I, I had a really bad day. I don't I don't feel like talking about it. Not interested, huh? No, I just I had a bad day. I don't I don't wanna talk about it. You know what your problem is? No, I don't. And I don't need you to tell me. Okay, we go through the same thing every night. We come home and eat and you play about how crap your day was. I'm tired of it. You sound like a little child. Oh yeah? You know what you sound like? Hey, you sound like a child. You sound like a child. That's you. That's what you sound like. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You always find some way to talk down to me. How long have we been together now? Mm, two years. It's It's been three. Do you remember the day we met? Yeah, it was June. No, it was September. How about my favorite movie? Oh, it's easy. Sleepless in Seattle. Ben, I've never seen Sleepless in Seattle, and I want to. It was Amelie. We saw it together three times. Remember that? Oh, that was you? I thought that was somebody else. You know what? A couple months ago we were talking about getting married, and I'm not even sure I want to be dating you now. Oh, don't say that. I got a new job now. I'm looking for something in my field. Your field? Ben, you want to be a rock star. I never said I wanted to be a rock star. <sighs> well, whatever you want to be. If we're going to stay together, we should, we should get some help. What, like a shrink? Well, a counselor, a psychologist or something. I mean, there's got to be people out there that work with couples like us. Oh, so you, so you can find someone else to tell me that I'm an idiot. You know, so you can find somebody else who can tell me that I'm the problem with this relationship. Sure, why don't we call Dr. Phil? I'm sure he can squeeze us in. If you're not going to be serious about working on a relationship, maybe, maybe we should talk about moving on. Fine, then I'll see a shrink. Will that make you happy? It might. You don't have to do that. You're right, I don't. You should be the one finding a couch to crash on. Maybe you should find a couch to crash on. Yeah, it's... No, it's part 14. Oh, we look in the user's manual and it'll tell you what parts are. Part number four. Did you check in the bottom of the box? Yeah, no, it should be in the user's manual. Yeah, okay, I'll take care of that. It'll be in the mail. Yes. Okay, we appreciate your business. Bye-bye. What the hell are you doing? What? I'm just fooling around. What's wrong, man? Did your band break up? No, my girlfriend's pissed at me. Ah, the old lady. Would you guys talk about getting hitched soon? We were, but I don't know, things sort of started to fall apart. Now she wants me to go see a couples counselor. Man, my ex-wife and I went to one of those. 
didn't help a bit. We had one of those old broads. She always took the woman's side. I walked in there. Next thing I knew, my jigglies were burning on the grill. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. I told her I'd try to find one today. Have I ever met your girl? No. I have the solution to your problem. I'm the man for the job. How would you do the job? Don't pay some hippie with a diploma. I'll play your strength for a couple weeks. I'm going to talk you up really good and bam, you're good to go. Uh, I don't think that would work. Why not? I'll do it for free and it'll help fix the situation. My sister has an office down the street. She's going to be gone for a couple weeks and I told her I water her plants. What, it's only going to take, what, an hour a week? And you think you could pull that off? Hell yes, I've always wanted to do this. Yeah, would you take it seriously? Oh, it'll be an Oscar-winning performance. She won't know any better, and you'll both go home happy. I think I'm going to prep the office tonight if you want to stop by. All right. I'll be there. Rad, I'll see you there. Well, hello there, uh, Ben, right? We spoke on the phone. And what's your name? I'm Katie. Katie, nice to meet you. Come on back. Come on back. Hey, come on in. Come on. Take a seat. So, let's start at the beginning. Why are you guys here? Well... Ben and I have been dating for several years now, and we even talked about getting married recently, but I guess lately we've just, we started fighting more and more about almost nothing. So, what kind of things have you been arguing about? Well, a few months ago when I lost my job, Katie was giving me a real hard time about- Oh, I was giving you a hard time. Please, 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 Katie. Let Ben tell his side of the story. Ben, please continue. Well, as I was saying, when I lost my job a few months ago, Katie was giving me a real hard time about every little thing. What the hell are they flapping their gums about? Just keep nodding. Makes them think I'm listening. What should I eat when I get home? I wonder if there are any lucky charms left. Let's see. I finished the Count Chocula this morning. There's some hot dogs left in the freezer. Oh, pick up more buns. Wait, tuna? Spaghetti sauce? I think I see a possible combination. Spending the night at her mom's house. I only do that because you snore all night. I don't snore. The hell you don't. Okay, okay. Let's stop pointing fingers at one another. Now, Katie, I can tell you have no respect for Ben. As the great Carl Jung once theorized, you point a finger at somebody, and you got four pointing right back at you, sister. See these guys right here? These four, right back at you. Okay, so Ben, what sign were you born under? What about me? I have some things I want to say. Well, sweetheart, you had your chance. Let's hear it from the man. He's been talking the entire time. For the love of God! What's wrong? Hold on, Gloria Steinham. I'm trying to assess the situation, but your gums keep flapping, okay? If you want me to help you, I will help you. Let's just try to relax and assess the situation. You will have your chance to speak, I promise. Ben seems like a nice guy here. You just gotta let him express himself more often. Here, whenever you guys are fighting, I want you to take a pen and these notebooks and write down everything that you wanna say. It could be something complimentary. Don't share it with the other person. Just bring it with here next week. This is ridiculous. I don't see why. Take a look over here. Do you see that? I'm the doctor here. I have a degree in psychology. I went to the U of A and graduated with a 2.8889 grade point average. I've seen deadbeat dads and babies' mamas roll through here, and they all come out like saints. Well, I guess I can give it a try. As my favorite professor once said, and forgive me for this second, I don't remember his name, do or do not. There is no try. So, what do 
What'd you think about last night? Do you think she bought it? I don't know what you're thinking, but it's gotta stop. What? I was awesome! What about that notebook idea? Wasn't that great? I'm not gonna write in that thing. That's a pointless exercise in stupidity. No! It will give her a chance to tell you how much she really cares. All you did last night was insult her and steal quotes from movies. That do or do not, that's Yoda. Everyone knows that. Is that where that comes from? But didn't he take that from somewhere else? I don't think she's gonna come back. Did she say that? No, I, I haven't talked to her yet. She's still at her mom's house. I'm gonna give her a call. No, no. This has gone on too long already. I'll call her. Hello? Hi, Katie. It's Dr. Mike. Oh, hi. I just wanted to say how great it was to see you and Ben the other day. I hope you guys come again next week. I know I said some things that might have upset you, but just understand, it's all a part of the unique psychological process. You know, Dr. Mike, I'm not sure if Ben and I are, are meant to be together. Oh, no, no, don't, don't think like that. I'm, I'm sure we can work this out. Well, all right, I'll, I'll give it another try. I'll see you then. Great, and remember, baby, do or do not, there is no try. Hey, it's me. Oh. You know, I don't think this whole counseling thing's working out. You're giving up already? I mean, I, I just don't know if we should keep seeing the same guy. Why do you always back out of everything? I think if there's any way to salvage this relationship, this is the way to do it. You mean you don't mind Dr. Mike? I think we should keep going, and if you back out, then it's over. Hi, are you here to see Dr. Mike? Yeah, is he here? Uh, he's actually with other clients. He'll be right with you. Um, are you putting this on your insurance? No, I... I'm gonna need you to fill out this paperwork. And if I can get a copy of your credit card before you leave, that would be great. There's gotta be some kind of mistake. Hello, Dr. Mike's office. This is Rachel. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, Nicole. I haven't seen you guys in forever. Hey, buddy. It's good to see you again. How you been? Hey. <laughs> I didn't know you guys were seeing Dr. Mike. Well, this is only our second time. Well, uh, we gotta take off. Why don't you give me a call this week and we'll go out for a beer or something? Hmm? Okay. All right. <laughs> see you soon. Bye. Hey, guys. Why don't you come on in? Do you have a restroom I could use? Right down the hallway. Hey, Ben. Come with me. So you know those people? Let me tell you what, Tom has a real issue in the bedroom. I think I'll make that a chapter in my book. Note to self, write chapter on boner problems. What the hell's wrong with you? What do you mean? You're seeing other people? How do you expect me to make a living when I'm working for you guys for free? You're not a real doctor. You don't have the education or experience to see patients. Look at that diploma up there. That's fake, we made that ourselves. But they don't know that, see? That's the thing, people come in with really messed up problems, and I'm here to help them. How many people are you seeing? About a dozen. A dozen people or a dozen couples? Couples! And you hired a secretary? Ben, please, she's an administrative assistant. Be a little PC here. And so as I was saying, love means never having to say you're sorry. So are we gonna look at our notebooks today? I'm glad you asked me that. Let me see him. All right, Ben. Here's what uh, Katie had to write about you. Uh, ben can be a real jerk sometimes. He always has to get in the last word. He can also be a really sweet guy. On our first date, he brought me my favorite flowers. Oh, that's, that's very nice. Very nice. And Ben has a reassuring smile. All right, Ben, let's see what you wrote about Katie. I don't think this is that important. Oh, it is. K 
Katie needs to lose some weight. Is this all? Oh, I didn't have much time to... You mean to tell me that you had a full week to work on that and all you can come up with is that I'm fat? Is that it? Is that all you have to say about me? Well, I didn't say you're fat. Oh, oh, okay, hold on here. Ben, this is very egregious of you. Katie, what do you think Ben should have wrote about you? Maybe that I'm... Crap! This is all I had planned. What's next? Think. Think. That he enjoys making love to me? Oh, my. Uh, why don't we talk about that? I don't think so. Why not? Ben, we should tell him. He's a doctor. Yes, I am a doctor. Now give me all the details. Well, Ben and I used to make love all the time. And then a few months ago, it came to like a complete halt. I, I just don't think this is the, the root of the problem here. Ben, what was your mother like? What does my mother have to do with this? Oh, everything! Did she spank you? Oh my god. Does he ever ask you to spank him? How did you know that? It's his external cognitive expression. It's everything from his hand gestures to the gesticulation of his madula oblongata. See, Ben longs to be a child again. Do you even know what medulla oblongata means? I'm out of here. We've only just begun! Okay. okay. <clears throat> you guys should continue to spend time apart from each other. But one night, go out on a very special date. Pretend like it's your first and start over like you're trying to get to know each other. This is so stupid. If you think it's so stupid, why don't you go find another girlfriend? All right, all right, all right, all right. The notebook's here, done. We're, we're moving on from that. What I want you guys to do is go out and enjoy your date. There's a term I like to use that I think will come in handy here. Remember to be magnanimous. Keep that in mind. Hello. I kind of want to talk to you about Dr. Mike. What about him? I don't think he's all he says he is. Come on, Ben, give me a break. You're always looking for an excuse. It's not an excuse. Hey guys, what's up? What's going on, buddy? It's good to see you again. Hey, Tom. Hey, uh, do you guys mind if we take a seat? No, go ahead. All right. So what do you guys think of Dr. Mike? Isn't he the best? Well, he's definitely different. He's fantastic. This guy's amazing. I owe so much to this guy. Did you know he was writing a book this year? Yeah, I think it's going to be a bestseller. I mean, the, the strategies, the techniques, they just surprise me every time. This guy's truly a revolutionary. He's not amazing. He's a fake. Ben! You don't get it, do you? The only thing I get is that you don't want to be with me. Is that it? I think this date's over. Fine. But if I don't see you at our next meeting, you're never going to see me again. So the date didn't go so well, I see. Ben, I sense some insecurity on your end. You have some serious trust issues. Well, let me tell you a story about a young man. His life was going nowhere, wandering aimlessly, getting fired from job to job, doing some drugs, banging hookers here and there. Well, he met another friend, and that friend turned him on to psychology. Well, that man was me. When I decided to become a psychoanalyst, I knew that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I don't feel insecure. I feel like... Ben, I think I finally realized what's going on here. Good. You have an inflated self-posticulation. You're angry at the world, and I sense great bigotry in you. On top of that, your impotency level has grown to bulbous proportion. You are an idiot. Ben. Ben, I'm going to prescribe you some Oxycontin. I want you to take it five times a day for the next six months. It's time for you to hear the truth. Mike's not a real psychoanalyst. He's a guy I work with in the customer service department. He agreed to play the part for my benefit. What? Th this man's clearly insane. Cut the bullshit, Mike. It's over. I thought this would help, but it's clearly blown way out of proportion. This office is a fake. 
The diploma's a fake. Mike's a fake. I don't even know what to say. It's true. I, I know it seems hard to believe, but it's true. What about all those other people who come in here? They don't know he's just some guy who barely passed high school. No, no, wait a minute. I'm sure we can work this out. Wait. I mean, is it true? Not exactly. I went to college for a semester or two. What am I supposed to believe here? In my professional opinion. You have no professional opinion. You've been lying to everyone, and you even had me lying to the woman I love. Now she'll never take me back. Thanks. Thanks for nothing. I just wanted to tell you that uh, I never wanted our relationship to end like this. And I've always been happy with you. Well, then you you lied to me. It wasn't like a like a little white lie. It was it was a really big one. I just did it because I love you. And I wanted us to seek help because I thought about making you my husband. I mean, I had to. I had to be sure a relationship could, you know, stand up to these problems. You think we still have a chance? I don't know. Do you still love me? Yes, but we're we're really gonna need some time to work on this. Are you fighting with your old man? Are you suffering from depression? Shingles? Boner problems? Hi, I'm Dr. Mike, and I've helped hundreds of screwed up people just like you. Come down to my office for a free consultation. With a college degree and years of experience, I can make trailer trash into kings and queens. Don't be shy, be magnanimous. Well, at least you and Katie are still together. Yeah, things got a lot better when I quit that customer service job a week later. Now, there was a period of time that I was working at a restaurant a while ago. Yeah, the hours are just terrible and the pay is lousy. But uh, what really kept me coming back were uh, some of the customers. I mean, there were these two kids, uh, Chad and Clay, used to come in all the time. Man, they were hilarious. There were like two things that these guys were absolutely obsessed with. And that was gambling and their buddy Casey's mom. I mean, you would not believe the hard time they gave this poor kid at their high school, man. Hey, you ever seen your mom naked? No. Not even when she just got in the shower? Cut it out. Hey, is she ever home alone? Yeah, is Rick here? Hey, Rick! Your boyfriends are here! Well, 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 look who decided to finally drop by. Why don't you boys go have a seat? I'll be right with you in a sec. Okay. Looks like someone went and joined the village people. Forget about the chains right now, man. You know, it looks like you're trying to distract me from that money you owe me. You're not gonna believe what I'm about to tell you, man. Oh, this will be good. Just hear me out. I'm about to tell you a crazy story. 
Dude, we're freaking losers sitting here all day playing video games. Yeah, what's your point, man? We should go out and get some girls or something. <laughs> yeah, like Casey's mom. Oh my God, Casey's mom's so hot. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Dude, I just got an idea. <sighs> All right, man, let's hear it. Dude, I bet you $100 by tomorrow you can't give me a pair of Casey's mom's underwear. All right, man. All right, you're on, man. I'll take that. You're on, man. Look, are you going to give me the money you owe me or not? Because, quite frankly... Hold on, hear me out. Okay. Okay, so you were going to give him $100 for the ladies' panties. Right. All he had to do was sneak into the house and get a pair of her underwear. How could you be sure that he actually had Mrs. York's underwear and didn't just go to the store and buy a pair? Well, because I had to go with him. What the hell are you wearing, Chad? I got chains put on these pants, man. Aren't they bitching? Yeah, they're awesome, dude. Keep telling yourself that. Yeah, whatever, man. Are you gonna go inside? Here's your chance. Yeah. This should be easy as pie. Sure, babe.
Hey, are we supposed to pick Casey up from soccer at five or six? Um, a six. Can you take the dog out? Yeah, sure, no problem. Thanks. No, we really had to pay his credit card bill. Take the dog. Yeah. There's someone, there's someone in the house. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. It's time to bring him back in the commission. Did you hear that? I think I heard somebody outside. Stuck back inside. Don't shoot! I'll bet you're wondering, who the hell are you? My name is Chad. Well, Chad, seems like you've gotten yourself into a little bit of a situation here. One that involves you, me, and my little friend. So, Chad, let me ask you a question. Do you usually sneak into people's houses? No, I... I'm not done. Let me ask you another question. What were you looking for? Um, I'm a friend of Casey's. He, um, forgot his gloves at soccer practice, and he asked me to come back to his house and get them for him. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. So you broke into my house, and you had to take off all your clothes to do it? I think I know what you were looking for. Did you find what you were looking for? I don't know what you're talking about. 
Oh, I'll bet you didn't. Is this where you found it? Went into the couch, didn't you? Seriously, I had no idea. Where did you stash it? I didn't steal anything. Oh, then why do you have your pants off? Thought you could sneak out of here with my belongings up your ass? I don't have anything up my ass. We'll see about that. Now, she's gonna untie you. And when she does, I want you to take your boxers off. What's wrong with you people? You should have asked yourself that before you broke into our home. Now hold on here. I'm sure we can work something out. Alright. Now I want you to stand up slowly and drop your boxers. Who the hell was that? Whoa! Hold on, buddy. Looks like you have some explaining to do. Thank God you guys are here. This guy broke into our home. Now I can assure you, there's an explanation. All right, let's hear it. I'm a friend of their son, Casey. I ran into him in the park on his way to soccer practice. He said he forgot his gloves at home and he asked me to come back and get them for him. The window was open, so I hopped in and went upstairs. When Mr. and Mrs. York got home, I didn't want them to think I was a burglar, so I tried sneaking out, but they caught me. So why do you have your pants off? Well, when I was trying to sneak out, I thought they were making too much noise, so I took them off. Is this what happened? I guess it could have. You guess it could have. Well, it looked like somebody broke into the house, so, so I got my gun, and the next thing I know, the two of these guys are running around the house like they own the place. Thanks for riding home. See you tomorrow. You Casey York? Yes. You know these guys? Yeah, yeah, it's Chad and Clay. I know him from school. Did you ask them to come back here and get your gloves for soccer practice? At this point, I know Mr. York was sweating his ass off. That little drug sat just a few feet away from two police officers, and I'm sure he didn't want me to spill the beans. Yeah, yeah, right before soccer practice. Why don't you kids just get out of here? Now, I don't want to catch you screwing around here again. Mr. York, we need to talk about your firearm. Oh, man. That was the closest escape I've ever seen. He almost stuck that gun up my ass. Oh, oh my god. We were supposed to meet Rick at the coffee shop over an hour ago. He's gonna be so pissed. So that's what happened, huh? That's not all. I'm a man of my word. Yeah, you are, but you are also real bad on time. You know, you could have just given me the money and skipped all the BS. I mean, don't get me wrong, that was very entertaining, but really, you probably should have just told me that you forgot to set your alarm. Oh, you think we made that story up? Come on. I mean, that story's got so many plot holes in it, it can't possibly hold water. I mean, what, the cops didn't search you? They just let you go? Come on. I guess it doesn't matter now since you got your money. That's right. And now I'm gonna go enjoy it. Why don't you boys have a nice day?
Those two got in trouble all the time. I mean, I had a couple of run-ins with the law, but I mean, these guys were like on a first name basis with the juvenile hall judges, man. Yeah, me and my brother used to get caught doing stuff like that all the time. I mean, now it's your turn. My turn? I can't top that one. Oh, come on, Tim. We're all spilling our guts here. It's your turn. All right, all right. Let's see. Uh... You know my brother Brian? I don't know if you guys do, but uh... all right. We were born Halloween 1978. Um, our mom always dressed us the same way growing up the whole damn time. There's a picture on her mantle, actually, of us dressed like sailors. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we grew up together, had the same music, same friends, lived in the same apartment, drove the same car. And actually, we still kind of dress alike. in action sports entertainment. The UWC is thrilled to give you one full evening of the most explosive action of the entire year. It's Christmas for all you fans out there. It's Fistorama 2006. For our first match, we have two of the most revered masters of the ring. In this corner, Weighing in at 227 pounds, Mr. Romano! And in this corner, weighing in at 249 pounds, the current UWC champion, the Ripper! That's okay, cause I got faith, that's a problem away, it's been a trial. Two weeks ago, you thought you had it all, you thought you were king, and I marched in here, and I took your pride, your dignity, and your belt, and now you think you're going to come in here with that little wrench, and these little fans, and take it back, think again. I'm gonna leave you laying on your back like I have a hundred times before. You know, and I know, and the fans know that Mr. Roboto's been programmed to kick your ass. That's my belt. I'm taking it back tonight! Yeah. Let the action begin! Yeah. Oh! Oh, oh now he won't let go! Another body slam! Oh! Hey, what'd you push him for? What are you talking about? I didn't shove you. The hell you didn't. Get up! 
killing myself! So where did you meet these guys? I met him at the Dean Martin birthday party last weekend. Dean Martin? Isn't he a dead singer? Yeah, with the Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra, and Sammy Davis Jr. They have a little birthday party for him each year in the high school gym. So what were you doing there? I was having fun, making up for all the fun stuff you miss out on. We used to do everything together. That's why I set this date up tonight. Well, I've been busy with school. That doesn't mean you have to become a nun. All right. So these guys, they're twins like us. They look exactly alike. I think that's them. Hurry up, okay? I'm coming. Man, what a great pad. Do you guys live here by yourself? No, we live here with our dad, but he's out of town for the weekend. Nice. My sister's upstairs getting ready. She'll be down in a minute. My sister isn't that adventurous. She doesn't go on very many dates. That's cool. I can dig it. Julie! This is Tim and Brian. Guys, this is Julie. You guys don't look like twins to me. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah. Ah! So you guys ready to hit the road? Let's do it. Wow, this place is really impressive. How'd you hear about it? We're friends with the owner. Hey, my boys, hey. Brian and Tim, doing, the man? brothers. What's How's going business? On? Hey, I can't complain, can't complain at all. I hear you. What you boys doing on this side of town? Oh, we thought we'd take these lovely ladies out to dine. Oh, look at what we got here. Two fine, beautiful flowers. Well, I'm Lawrence. Welcome to my restaurant. You guys get anything to drink yet? Not yet. Oh, well, this calls for the Tay, too. It's a blend of only the best liquors and mixed fruits, and along with herbs to promote health and uh, fertility. That sounds great, man. We appreciate it. Oh, you and your guests are always welcome here. All right. Wow. He was really impressive. That's Lawrence. So, are you interested in African culture? Me? Uh, absolutely. I mean, the place is so different from our own, yet it's, it's so beautiful and unique. Yeah, I feel the same way. Actually, I'm majoring in African literature at the university. Really? Have you read The Conquest ever? Oh my gosh. It's, I've read it like a thousand times. It's one of my favorites. I mean, from the moment I met you, I could tell you were a lady of exquisite taste. So, what do you guys do for a living? Well, we're full-time students and we run our own recording studio. And we sell rare items on the internet. Here you guys go. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. This is just what I needed. So it's three in the morning, and I hear these noises outside. I look outside my window and see two men dressed in leisure suits stealing two African masks I purchased at the university's art function. I went outside my pajamas, and they were gone. Did they take anything else? No. They didn't take my stereo. They didn't take my television. They didn't take... Wait a minute. Those are the guys. Those are the guys who stole my masks. You two sons of a bitch stole my mask. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, buddy. The hell you know what I'm talking about. You calling the brothers lies and thieves? Seeing how there isn't anyone else in the city that looks like the two of you, then yes, I think you stole my mask. Oh, brother, you Get out of here! Get your hands off me! Get out back and shoot him! What was that all about? I have no idea. Have you ever seen that man before? Never. Well, if you'll excuse us, we need to run to the ladies' room. Have you ever read The Conquest? Never. <laughs> Two birds. One stone. <laughs> so, what do you think? I don't know. He seems to be well-cultured. He knows a lot about Africa. 
Wow, you've changed a lot in the last hour. You went from wanting to stay at home to actually having a conversation with the guy. I think we should go back to the house. I want to show him some of my art. Are you serious? Yeah, I think he's a nice guy. All right, if that's what you want. I don't mean that we should, like, get with these guys. I just want to show him some of my art. Sure, some of your art. I mean it. Hurry up. Who knows what they're thinking out there? All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Where's the silverware? You see, the traditional Ethiopian food. It's eaten with your hands like this. So I was thinking that maybe when we're done eating, we could go back to our house. I'd like to show you some of my art collection. It's really unique. I think you'd like it. That just sounds wonderful. Too. Yeah. I like foods I can eat with my hands. Yeah, me too. It just gets under my nails. Ah, uh, what's this? Oh, this is a 14th century tribal mask. It's one of my favorites. Whoa! Down, just the oils in your hands and uh, stuff. Yeah. What do we have over here? Oh, well, come on over. I'll, sh I'll show you. So what's this one? Um, this is actually from the conquest. Do you remember that chapter where the lady's bringing water to the, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's... Looks familiar. What, what's the name of the guy that did this? Uh, her name is Shannon. She's one of my best friends from high school. How about this one? Um, this one is from another friend of mine who just moved out to San Francisco last year. It's, it's got great breaststrokes. I mean, it's got great brush strokes. Brush strokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a really nice job. Uh, he? An, um, an old boyfriend? No, I've never really had a boyfriend. Come on. A beautiful girl like you? Well, everyone always liked my sister, not me. Well, I think you're beautiful. Don't say that. But it's true. I mean, you're startling. No one's ever said that to me before. I mean it. You got a lot of stuffed animals. Yeah, they were all gifts. I love them. Why don't you come have a seat over here? Damn, you have pretty eyes. I know. I'm not all that shy, you know. Oh, uh, no? Nope. I'm gonna have to tell Jerry a couple more times off them top ropes like this, getting too hard on my back. I'll let Jerry try it himself a couple of times. Really? Girls, I'm home. Oh my god. I think my dad's home. What? You're not supposed to be here. No one's ever kissed me before either. May I? Hey, honey. I'm home early. Hi, Daddy. Why are you all uh, dressed up? What's uh, going on? Nothing. I was just... Easy on the thread, man! Where's your sister? I found these two and my daughters. For the love of God! I leave you for two days and you betray my... Hey, you fuck! Get back here with my belt! No, oh, you! You two! 
You two stole my belt, and now you're violating my daughters. You'll not escape the wrath of the Ripper. Daddy, no! He's picking him up off the ground! Chair! Oh, he got him across that back! What a classic move! Oh, the humanity! I haven't seen a beating like this since Russell Pelosa 97! Daddy, no! The Ripper is getting in a position! And they are out cold! Stick a fork in them! They are done! Hey, Mr. Van Winkle, I hereby order you to pay all medical bills in full, as well as $10,000 to both Mr. Tim Bradley and Mr. Brian Bradley for other damages. All right, give her a crank now. All right. Oh my God, thank you so much. How much do I owe you? Man, no problem. I just had to give me around a few wires. Thank you, I really appreciate it so much. Yeah, hey, you devils just better remember me when you hit it big. I never did forget that guy. I know it doesn't sound like much, but playing music and traveling with a group of friends was a dream I'd been chasing for years. I didn't know it at the time, but that van breaking down was one of the best things that could have happened to us. It wasn't until that point that I realized those were the best years of my life. <laughs>